Hey guys, Tim here with TCG Grading, welcoming you back to the Pokemon community. In today's video, we have a $10 budget challenge where I took $10 and I bought Pokemon cards off of TCG Player, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, my local game store, to try and find the best deals possible to add to our collection or to even flip for a profit. Let's go ahead and get into it. We got four really, really cool cards today. Uh, I will be giving away one of the cards you see today. Just leave a comment down below and I will be choosing one winner um, from the comments randomly to get one of these cards for free. Uh, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to start with a base set unlimited Gyarados holographic card. This is not the 1999-2000 uh, kind of error, you know, later edition, but this is the uh, regular 1999 unlimited version, number 6 of 102. I picked this card up off of TCG Player for $1.70. It was listed in near mint condition, and it actually did come in near mint condition for $1.70. How crazy is that? I was really, really surprised whenever this came, and it was in such good condition. The only thing that's really wrong with it is it does have a little bit of curvature, but if you were to send this in for grading, it would not be docked at all for the curvature in the card. There's no holographic scratching or anything like that. It's a really, really clean card. There is some slight whitening at the very top, as you guys can see there. But this would still grade as a near mint card if I were to send it in to get graded. The last uh, PSA 10 copy of this card sold for $405. How crazy is that? The last PSA 9 sold for approximately $84. There is a PSA 9 population of this card of close to 2000 psa 9 base set unlimited gyarados cards to me that's just crazy there's about 500 in a psa 10 so it's a very very heavily graded card basically anytime anybody opens up a base set uh, unlimited pack and they pull a hollow gyarados they're sending it in for grading mostly because base set unlimited packs sell for approximately 300 dollars so if you you know want to get any sort of return on your investment on that 300 dollars booster pack you definitely got to send everything in to get graded to try and get the best cards or the highest grade possible for sure. Uh, really, really cool card. Uh, I think people really underestimate how much base set Unlimited was originally printed. Everyone's talking about, oh, the print runs crazy, crazy big on all these newer sets that are coming out. But base set Unlimited was printed like crazy. So, so heavily printed, just like today's sets. Pokemon craze back in 1999 was, you, you can't even imagine, it was wild. I was a young, young kiddo whenever it first started, and I was a part of it, and uh, it, the print run was just massive. I saw base set unlimited packs in the store, you know, on the shelf for close to four years. Uh, just, like I said, it's heavily, heavily printed set, and the biggest reason why you could pick up a holographic card for $1.70 is because it's so heavily printed and basically everybody did keep <laughs> their you know cards from when they were a kid and the cards that are just in the regular near mint condition maybe closer to lightly played you know there's just so many of them out there that you can pick them up for a dollar and 70 cents it's crazy uh, original base set cards for a dollar 70 cents i will take those all day i would put a value on this card right around eight to nine dollars last sold copies in some worse condition actually than what this one were we're right around eight or nine dollars so Approximately $9 for a $1.70 card. Can't beat that whatsoever. The next card that I picked up was this really, really nice um, Altart A Luzamine. This is the Altart of the Ultra Prism Luzamine. Basically the best card you could pull out of Ultra Prism. Uh, the Altart A is number 153. As you can see, the little A right there down in the bottom indicates that it is an Altart A promo. They label uh, these Altart cards with that Altart A so they don't stay in standard uh, format longer than they're supposed to. Whenever they first started doing reprints of cards with different artworks, they actually made them as Black Star promos. And then those Black Star promos would actually stay in standard format for the duration of you know, the, you know, the promo uh, cycle instead of going out of the standard format with the original card. Uh, so that's how they fixed that was by introducing the yellow A. Um, they actually did away with the yellow Altart A in Sword and Shield. They just now, they just put the regular set number on there. That way they don't have to worry about it being in standard rotation for too long. As you guys can see, this is a second place Lusamine Pokemon League Challenge card. I paid $1.21 for this card. I would put a value on this one right around $5. Similar copies of the second place card have been selling for 
between five and ten dollars so on the lower end i would say I, I would say right around that five dollar price mark would be a really really good estimate as you guys can see this one's in really really good condition there's not any heavy scratching or anything like that it's obviously very off-centered uh, but i was really surprised when i got this in for a dollar and 21 cents uh, second place league championship cards are just really really cool they came in packs of four they had first second third and fourth place cards all in the same sealed pack the sealed packs with all four cards on the inside sell for approximately 125 dollars which putting the second place card at five dollars when the sealed pack goes for 125 it's a really really good bargain in my opinion even if you were to pay full price for this card league championship cards are just really underrated in my opinion this was actually released as a prize this was the last alt art a league championship promo this came out uh in the unified minds uh league championship era and this was the last one this is the last um alt art a league championship promo that they ever did and it's a really good one it has Luzamine on it as you guys know you know the female trainer cards always do really really well it's just a really cool card i know that's a lot of information to kind of digest but it's just i don't think these are appreciated or just they're just not well known enough to really have any crazy crazy high value um let me go ahead and get a new sleeve for this card the one that it came in wasn't too great but really really cool card this is probably my favorite card of uh, this entire budget challenge it's not the most expensive or most valuable card but to me that card has a lot of potential for future growth the next card i picked up was a reverse holographic dragon frontiers ex dragon frontiers larvitar i picked this card up for 71 cents it was listed as moderately played and uh to be honest it actually came in a little bit better condition than what they had it listed as you can see there's whitening on that corner right there and some whitening right there on that corner but overall this is in really really good shape there's no dents or creases or any heavy scratching there is a little print line on it but that wouldn't really take anything extra off compared to the uh the whitening on the corners in the back i think that these similar to the league championship cards especially the ones that are marked set first second third and fourth place these reverse holographic stamped cards are just really really cool you don't see a lot of these i don't think there's as many of them out there as we think uh i don't really know what else to say about this it's just to me it's so cool and it's so very underrated the, having the ex dragon frontier stamp on there is really cool this is actually an alternate art there's a different uh larvitar in ex dragon frontiers with a separate art so this is one of the two larvitar artworks from ex dragon frontiers i don't really have anything else to say um any reason why other than the fact that these are just really really cool and for picking them up for 71 cents you know for instance you could pick up you know like a regular rare or holographic card from like fusion strike you know if you picked up a card like this you know like a regular male metal from the newest set you'd be spending right around the same price you know the latius rare some of these are from fusion these are all from fusion strike and a lot of these rares you know that just aren't as cool you would be spending the same amount or more and there's just so many more of these in the population an ex dragon frontiers pack last time i checked was selling for right around 330 dollars you do get any card um, that's in the set in the reverse holographic form all the commons uncommons and all of the rares you can get with this reverse holographic stamp which actually makes them a little bit more rare than the actual holographics in the set they're actually easier to get which seems crazy right <laughs> just really crazy um like i said i would put a value on this card right around three dollars or so just because it does have that whitening on the corners paying 71 cents it's just it was a good pickup in my opinion let me know what you guys think of this you know i don't really have like i said i don't really have a specific reason why I think these are good pickups. I just think they're so cool that there's no chance that they're gonna go any lower, right? They're already under a dollar and I would actually pay more than what I paid for this card if I were to find another one. Really, really cool card. Really big fan of the reverse holographics from all of the EX era cards. All right, guys, the last card I picked up, this is the most valuable card that I bought. I spent $5 on this one. I spent $5 on this EX Fire Red and Leaf Green Holographic Dugong. I bought this in near mint condition. I was really surprised that it was only $5. And to be honest, the condition isn't really what they said it should be. Look at that swirl right there in the corner. How cool is that? Um, to me, this card is in more of a light played condition because it has some pretty heavy scratching on the holographic. If I can get it to 
light up right. There's just a really big scratch right down the middle. And with near mint cards, um, I bought this off of TCG player. With near mint holographic cards on TCG player, there's not supposed to be any scratching on the hollow. Other than that, it's in really, really good condition. Um, if it did not have that scratch, I would probably send this card in to get graded just because it looks so good. EX Fire Red and Leaf Green is just a crazy, crazy popular set. And as you can see there, there's a little bit of a bend on the card. I actually didn't, didn't notice that until now. So definitely not the near mint condition like they said it was in. Let me see if there another little, yeah, there's another little bend right there. So it's got two creases, bends in it, and then that big heavy scratch right there. But even paying $5 for this card, just the overall eye appeal of it from the front is really, really good. And I think somebody would pay more than $5 for this card if I were to try and resell it. I'm going to put this one into my personal binder just because it's so cool. Um, I didn't really make any profit, you know, margin or, you know, any extra value off of this specific card just because of the damage it came with. But I ended up keeping the card um, and not sending it back just because it looks so good. Like how good does that holographic pattern look on this Dugong card? The last uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green pack sold for approximately $250. If you were to buy a heavy pack, they would go for more than that. And this could be the holographic you pull from it. Just so cool. So very, very cool. Uh, there's a population of 15 in a PSA 10 and a population of 31 in a PSA 9. I, like I said, just so cool. Unfortunately, it came with damage, but that's kind of the, the risk that you run whenever you buy cards off of TCG Player specifically especially if they don't have pictures, you know, if they list it in near mint and it comes like this, you don't even want to bother with the hassle of doing a return or anything like that. Super cool card. This is definitely the most valuable card from the bunch. Um, I spent right at about $8 on this $10 budget challenge. I thought that, you know, these cards were just really, really cool. That's the main reason I picked them up. Um, I knew that I kind of knew that this card wasn't going to come in the near mint condition like they said it was, but from, you know, from a distance, this looks like a really, really good card, and it's going to look really good inside of my EX Fire Red and Leaf Green binder, and I'm excited to have it. All of these cards are just really, really cool in my opinion. I'm excited to have every single one of them. Make sure you guys leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorite card was from this $10 budget challenge. Which one of these would you want to add to your personal collection? And if you win, I will be sending it to you free of charge. I do appreciate you guys checking out this video. I'll leave a link down below with some more uh, $10 budget challenge videos that I've done in the past, and I'll see you in the next one.